care to move that the House takes note of miscellaneous business? I so move, Mr the Speaker. Honourable <laughs> Carmel Cipollone. Mr Speaker, what a start to the day. Two weeks out to the end of the year and the opposition is feeling it, Mr Speaker. I remember being 16 years old at secondary school and staging walkouts just like that, Mr Speaker. But I had principled reasons for doing it and I'm concerned that actually on the other side of the House it's just general frustration and they've given up, Mr Speaker. They've given up. We did notice who was left behind in their chairs, though, and couldn't help but notice that it was the members that would probably contest the leadership, Mr Speaker. We had Judith Collins, we had Mark Mitchell, and who was the other one? I think we had Amy Adams left behind at the end of that wonderful walkout. Mr Speaker, then there were the few that probably have aspirations and wouldn't have the votes, people like Nathan Guy and Michael Woodhouse. And then, of course, there's always that one person that likes the drama, and that, of course, was the Honourable David Carter, who stayed behind to observe what was going on, Mr Speaker. But while that side of the House is staging walkouts and frustration, and because two weeks out from the end of the year they just can't handle it anymore and they just want to go home, this side of the House is just getting on and doing the business, Mr Speaker. One year into it, and here we are on this side of the House with quite a lot to celebrate. In fact, listening to uh, my colleague, the Honourable uh, David Clark, respond to uh, questions from the opposition, it may as well have been a patsy question um, from our side of the House, because he had the opportunity, uh, when talking about the mental health inquiry and the report that's come out, a report that was commissioned by this side of the House because we care about mental health and we know that it's been neglected for far too long because of a government previously who took no action with regard to mental health. He was then able to reply that we haven't been paralysed because of an inquiry. And in fact, over the course of the last year, he was able to tell Matt Juicy that, keep in mind, we put $200 million uh, towards DHB, ring-fenced for mental health, Matt Ducey. Uh, keep in mind that actually we just announced the extension of the Community Services Card, which is going to see hundreds of thousands of New Zealanders get access to low-cost um, primary health care. Keep in mind that we've rolled out nurses to Decile 4 schools uh, Mr Speaker, uh, so that more of our children uh, get the care that they need. And keep in mind that we also um, rolled out the Mana Aki program to primary and intermediates in Christchurch and Kaikoura. So any accusation from that side of the House that we have been paralysed in the mental health space because of an inquiry is false. And clearly, we've got lots of evidence to prove that that's not the case. Mr Speaker, that's mental health. There's so many areas that I could talk about, about the one in particular, given that this will probably be my last chance, in a general debate at the end of this year, after a year as the Minister for Social Development that I really wanted to touch on was, of course, the Families Package. Well we came into government very clear about what our priority was, and that was low to middle income and New Zealanders, Mr Speaker, and we showed that commitment by within that first 100 days committing $5.5 billion to those families, Mr Speaker. It was a shift away from the previous government's uh, commitment to wanting to uh, cut taxes, uh, with a large proportion of those tax cuts going to the highest income earners in this country, uh, and it was much more targeted and it was the right thing to do. And I want to say, Mr Speaker, I'm very proud of the fact that we have rolled out uh, changes and, and, and lifted the, the thresholds with regards to working for families, uh, that we new have, a, have a new Best Start payment that recognises the importance of babies in this country and those first three years in particular. And uh, Mr Speaker, I'm very proud of the fact that we've rolled out a winter energy payment <coughs> that's targeted towards beneficiaries, uh, superannuitants, those on veterans' pensions. And Mr Speaker, and Mr. Speaker, I'm very proud of the fact that all of those measures were done under this government and were done with the right intentions, 
and are targeting the families who need the support in this country. Mr Speaker, a year into it, we're energised. We could keep going. We don't even need a holiday. Meanwhile, that side of the House is staging walkouts because they just can't handle the heat. Thank you. Honourable Paula Bennett. Well, Mr Speaker, 